Hi guys, we're back at the topic of garage remotes, okay? If you haven't yet seen my previous video about this topic, uh, go check it out. It's uh, basically the introduction, the theoretical introduction to uh, garage remotes, okay? But uh, this time the video uh, is focusing about how you can identify the, the type of garage remote that you are currently using. Uh, either for uh, uh, just uh, finding out uh, that you already have a, a good enough uh, security level on your setup or uh, to be able to uh, uh, identify uh, the need to upgrade your security system for example okay so without further ado let's go Okay guys, let's do this. So first we'll start with the learning code example, okay? Uh, I've, I went ahead and I already opened both this one and the rolling code as well, okay? So let's look at the insides of the learning code first. Okay, so here they are. And at first I see something that says NDR43392, okay? So just by looking at these numbers, uh, I can already assume that this, this, is, this is actually part of the transmitter and it's referring to the, the transmission frequency, 433.92 megahertz, okay? But uh, to, to be sure, let's, let's look this up using uh, Google, okay? So, NDR43392, and we have a datasheet archive here, okay? Let's see what this says. NDR43392, it's a saw resonator. It provides reliable fundamental mode quartz frequency stabilization, meaning in transmitters or local oscillators operating at 433.92 megahertz, okay? So this in fact tells us that this is um, either the transmitter or part of the transmitter, okay? So now we already know the frequency that this remote is operating at, but we still don't know what kind of remote it is. But uh, we can also see up here a little chip that I can zoom in in the next image. And we, we see now the letters EV and then 1527. And down here we have 12... 78, 76, I don't know, but let's start by searching for EV1527 and see what Google can tell us about it. So, EV1527, <clears throat> okay, uh, we have uh, a data sheet here, let's see. Uh, Okay, description, EV1527 is OTP encoder. Okay, so it's a, it's a signal encoder. Okay, or uh, so it generates codes. Okay, in this case, I think OTP is a one-time uh, code or something. So it generates the same code over and over again, which makes sense for, because the learning code is a fixed code system, but we have here a PDF. Let's open this one. And what does this say? EV1527 OTP encoder. OTP encoder using MOS technology process has a maximum of 20 bits, providing up to 1 million codes. It can reduce any code collision and authorized code, can code scanning possibilities. Okay, uh, 20 bits, so 2 uh, to the power of 20 is, yeah, uh, 1 million and something codes. Okay, so that's correct. Okay, we can also see here, uh, here it is, EV1527 and learning code remotes explained. Ripple security. So what is EV1527 learning code? EV1527 format of learning code receivers commonly used by radio frequency transmitters such as garage or remotes. Okay. Learning code systems have fixed codes assigned to each remote, which do not change. Yeah, we already know this, but okay. So um, uh, here it is, EV1527 is in fact 
uh, a learning code system as we already uh, uh, suspected okay but now it's it's confirmed okay so moving on to uh, our rolling code example okay so in 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 our case the the rolling code uh, remote has a sticker on it so it makes it really easy to identify the kind or the type of garage remote it is because it says here explicitly that it is using the 433.92 megahertz frequency to communicate with the receiver and it is a rolling code okay nevertheless i went ahead and opened it and opened it and when i opened it i saw uh, a jdr433a okay so again just by the numbers i do think this is uh part of the of the transmitter before because 433 uh, uh it must be uh, 433 uh, megahertz okay nevertheless let's google this jdr 433a let's go jdr 433a we have a data sheet here again saw resonator here it is and uh, so resonator provides reliable fundamental mode quartz frequency stabilization meaning in transmitters or local oscillators okay and it's compliant with 433.92 megahertz okay so it is confirmed part of the transmitter okay okay but uh what is it okay so um at the back of the of the board of the board of the remote we have this chip uh, uh, that has the letters eg and then 301 okay and another another uh, set of uh, letters and numbers down here but let's google eg 301 and i'm expecting a rolling code system eg 301 we have a data sheet here EG301, it's the first one. Description, look at it. Roll code coding chip, okay? So it's a chip to uh, produce or to generate rolling codes. So uh, uh, it's correct uh, and it's aligned with the sticker, okay? Then we, you, you have the, the PDF, but it appears to be in Chinese or some Asian language, okay? I really can't, can't read it, but it, it's uh, correctly identified as a rolling code system in the 433.92 megahertz frequency, okay? And that's it. We were able to correctly identify our current remotes. One more thing I want to talk to you about. Um, how do you upgrade your existing uh, garage opener uh, to use, for example, a rolling code from a learning code to a rolling code system. Do you need to buy a new garage motor? Actually, uh, you don't, or I would say uh, almost all of the time you don't. Um, but I can't be 100% sure if all uh, garage openers uh, provide the functionality of um, uh, connecting to external electronic actuators in order to open or close the door okay i don't know any single one of them that does not allow for this uh, but um, i can't be 100 percent sure of course but usually all garage door openers do have uh, a set of pins that you can uh, connect to external receivers uh, for example wi-fi bluetooth or rolling code receivers for example so that uh, they can actuate actuate on the on the garage door opener and tell it to either open or close the door okay uh, you can check this by uh, going to your uh, garage motor user manual it it should say there that uh, um, if if it does have those extension pins or not for for interfacing with external uh, actuators and uh, how you would go about uh, connecting those wires okay uh, let's see an example on uh, um, how you could uh, upgrade your current for example learning code system to a rolling code system just by 
buying a rolling code uh, receiver, external receiver. For that, I'm going to go to Amazon, okay, which is one of my favorite places to buy stuff online. And I'm going to search for rolling code uh, receiver. Okay, perfect. 19 euros. Looks good. Okay, I, I've already used a very similar uh, one to this one. In fact, I I think it's exactly the same. Okay, and uh, this actually works very good. This works, this is a, a, a jack of all trades kind of uh, receiver because it works on 433.92 megahertz, but it works on rolling codes, fixed codes, and it also increases your um, memory in terms of uh, how many um, remotes you can have paired with it. Okay, you can also use this if you have uh, uh, exhausted all of your um, garage door openers uh, memory in order to pair new uh, or more garage remotes you can also use something like this okay as a as a memory extender okay but as you can see down here codes can work with any fixed learning or rolling codes okay so this uh, something like this connected to your uh, gar current garage door opener would be sufficient in order for you to be able to use or start using rolling codes okay i'm not sure that this would be um, uh, compatible with all uh, kinds of uh, rolling code garage remotes because uh, as we already saw in my previous video uh, uh, rolling codes work on the basis of uh, um, algorithms that generate the codes and if it doesn't have the same algorithm it won't produce the same codes but the for me it would be a matter of uh, like uh, ordering one of these because this is amazon they are great on on uh, customer service and on uh, being able to test something out to see if it works or not and being able to return it so you could just buy one of these have them ship them to to you try it with your new uh, rolling code uh, garage remotes if they work fine if they don't just uh, return it and try try another rolling code receiver at least that's what I would do but here it is, uh, a much cheaper way to improve your security just by um, buying um, a rolling code uh, receiver and um, uh, plugging it into your current garage uh, door opener. And regarding uh, how you would be able to connect your new uh, rolling code receiver to your uh, existing garage remote I have a small example here okay uh, so this is a this is a garage remote I just found on the internet uh, but uh, over here he has three pins that are exposed in order to uh, be able to connect them to this external um, garage receiver garage remote receiver it has a little antenna here okay that is used to receive the the radio frequency communication from the the garage remotes okay and then it will uh, uh, be able to to transmit the the open or closed door information with these wires over here to the garage door opener and the garage door opener will just react to those electronic impulses okay so that's uh, basically how you would uh, be able to connect uh, an external um, garage uh, remote receiver to your existing uh, garage door opener and that's it i hope this video was useful to you as always please leave your comments and suggestions here in the video uh, thank you and i will see you next time